Okay, so you just got your K40 laser and you want to get started with cutting and engraving as fast as possible. But the documentation is not really great. So in this video I'm going to go over the four steps necessary to get this machine cutting and I'm also going to talk about some upgrades that I think are going to be necessary to get a good clean laser on this one. First, I'm going to show you how to set up this machine. Second, we're going to talk about safety. Third, we're going to calibrate the mirrors. And fourth, I'm going to talk about all the software you're going to need and how to get this thing cutting. Now all the files and tutorials I'm going to mention or reference, I'm going to link in the notes below so you can read up on that and get more insight. Step one, hardware. Now before you want to connect this machine to power, you want to make sure to install the fan in the back. It just slides into place and connect the hose to it. This is to suck out all the smoke from the interior of the machine. Second, you want to connect the hoses that come from the laser tube to a pump and place that pump in a large bucket of water. You never want to run the laser without cooling, even for a second, since it will break really fast. Now both the ventilation and the pump can be connected to the back of the machine. That way they will always be connected once the machine is powered on and you can never forget it. Second, safety. This laser uses high voltage. And even though it's low current, you never want to touch the laser tube or anything in the back or the power supply while it's running. So always have both the back and the power supply unit closed down. Also the laser is very powerful and it'll take your eyesight in a moment's notice without a doubt. So this is the most important thing. Never operate the laser with a cover opened. This does not have a safety switch, which is a design flaw and we're gonna fix it in a future video. But until then, never operate it with a cover open. And if you have to, make sure to use some glasses with the right wavelength protection. So I never operate the laser without my glasses and the thing closed, just to make sure. This is a lifetime of blindness that you do not want to mess with. Now to calibrate the mirrors. This is the most tedious part of the process, but it has to be done only once. So take your time with it and try and be precise. Now there's three mirrors in this that are going to be referenced as mirror one, mirror two and mirror three. Mirror 2 is on the Y axis and mirror 3 is on the X axis. Now the laser comes with a metal band plate for the second mirror mount. If you have a 3D printer I would urge you to print my replacement for it. The files are down below. It's not necessary but it's going to make it a lot easier to adjust that mirror. You want to start with mirror 2 closest to you. So furthest away from mirror 1. Then you want to place some masking tape on top of mirror 2 so you can see where the burn mark hits. You want to set the current of the laser very low, just enough to mark the tape. Then you want to adjust mirror 1 with the three screws so that mirror 2 gets hit dead center. Once you accomplish that, move mirror 2 back to the back, close to mirror 1 and fire again. Then you have to check how that dot changed relative to the first one. If the first one is dead center and the second one is higher, that means your mirror 2 is too low and you have to raise it up. On the original mirror 2 mount, you had to put washers underneath and then screw it back in to raise the mirror. On my mount you just have to untighten two screws, lift it up a bit and tighten it. Now after each adjustment, move mirror to, to the front, fire laser, move it to the back and see that they're both about the same height. Once you get it to hit center on mirror 2, close to you and on the same height, far away from you, then you can see if the laser moved left or right relative to the first position. If it moved left, you have to move the mirror 2 mount in that direction. If it moved right, you have to move it into that direction. After each adjustment, repeat the steps and see that they are both center in the front and in the back. After that, we're going to do basically the same for mirror 3. Move the mirror 3 to the far right and try to hit a dead center, adjusting mirror 2 with the three screws. Once you have that, move the mirror 3 close to mirror 2 and hit it again. If it's too high, mirror 3 is too low and you have to put space underneath. Now I also printed spacers on my 3D printer. These are just a bit easier to use, but not really necessary. If the dot is too far to the left or too far to the right, move the mirror 3 in that direction. Now technically you're done at this point, but I would advise you to take out all the mirrors and clean them with a soft cleaner like a glass cleaner to get off all the residue that the burnt tape left behind. Don't forget to clean the lens at the bottom of mirror 3, because that's where the laser is focused and that should be really clean. Now part 4, software. The printer comes with a CD, a USB dongle and a bag of goodies. Throw all that shit away, it is useless. Instead, download K40 Whisperer. It's a free program, 
it is not shiny, so you don't know what's inside the driver things, and it just works. Also to accompany that and to create files, you're gonna need Inkscape. Once you have installed both of these programs, you can power up your machine and connect it to the computer via USB 2. In the program, you can then initiate the printer and load a file. The file can either be DXF or SVG. I'm gonna leave a tutorial in the notes below how you can create files with SVGs that also include pictures for rastering. But for now, let's focus on a DXF file that I'm gonna link below. Once you load that file, you have the option of moving the origin of that file. Once you're happy with the position, adjust the current to the amount you need. That's gonna be pretty individual and a learning by doing thing, cause your material is gonna differ, your mirror quality is gonna differ, the voltage in the back is gonna differ, there's a lot of factors, so you're gonna have to try and error. And with the current set, you can hit start and watch your design come to life. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I left more resources in the notes below, so if you wanna read up on any of those topics, go ahead. Some upgrades I would consider mandatory are forced air on the nozzle, a better exhaust system in the back, because this one is just terrible. And probably better electronics, but these are in the future. Also, if you have a few dollars lying around, please buy new mirrors, better ones, not the cheap Chinese ground ones. You're gonna get at least 10% more um, power out of your laser that way. If you want to see me upgrade my machine with those things, please subscribe and leave a note below which one you want to see first. If you have any more questions, leave them down below and I will try to answer them. I hope you enjoyed and have a good one.